What's up you guys, I'm Dan, this is Frugal Not Cheap, and today we'll talk about the value of travel lounges and other benefits that come from travel credit cards. So in my last video, which was a reaction to a video from uh, How Money Works about how we're all going to work until we die, <laughs> um, I mentioned that I took a trip to New York recently. And on that trip to New York, I got huge value from the Capital One Venture X. Now, I also have a Chase Sapphire Reserve card, uh, which I could have used as well. But in my case, living in a city where the airport has a Capital One lounge, and then it's really definitely a perk to be using the Venture X card. So these are the two that I have right now, but I've also had the American Express Platinum, and I've got some old videos that kind of go over the math for sort of the Chase Trifecta, also the Capital One Duo, which I'm using right now, and then uh, just kind of breaking down uh, the Amex Platinum as well, and why, you know, in my case, uh, the credits don't really make sense, but they very well could make sense for you. And so these are kind of the big three, you know, super common travel cards. Now, right off the bat, all three of these will give you um, a reimbursement for TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. In the case of American Express, you can also get clear. I, I did have that benefit for a year, but I didn't travel in that year when I had the card, so I didn't end up trying it out. Uh, let me know in the comments below if it's any good. But, um, you know, the... Uh, the global entry does automatically grant you TSA pre-check as well, so definitely in my case uh, that seems like the way to go, especially as I travel internationally. But it was nice being able to have pre-check because at DFW at least, uh, the line for pre-check was uh, not only shorter, but even in cases where the lines are about the same length, the TSA lines, uh, pre-check lines go a lot faster because of course the security standards are less stringent. Once I got airside into the airport though, then that's where the other big benefit from these travel cards kicks in, and that is the lounges. So I purposefully arrived early at the airport, and not only did I arrive early, but I arrived in the wrong terminal. I arrived in Terminal D, which has the Capital One Lounge. At the Capital One Lounge, I had a little snack, which was some baklava and uh, also a uh, pan au chocolat. But the real big reason for stopping by besides that snack was in order to pack my dinner. A great benefit about the Capital One lounges um, is they've got all this grab-and-go food. On the top tier, you've got different kinds of sandwiches. Then you've got another tier that's got salads and this other little, um, like a snack, like a hummus and uh, different things that you would dip in it to eat, vegetables and stuff. Then you've got a row that's got desserts and then another one that's got a bunch of different drinks. In my case, I packed up a chicken salad sandwich, a BLT sandwich, a roasted beet salad, uh, some juice, some pomegranate, something, then a black cherry parfait, and also some overnight oats. And I put this all in my backpack for the flight. So I value this variety, all this stuff, at about $20, given that the alternative would be trying to get something at the airport, and airport food is relatively expensive. After that, I headed to Terminal E, where my Delta flight was departing from, and at this terminal, they actually have a Plaza Premium Lounge. So the Venture X gives you access to uh, three different sort of lounges, things. Uh, you've got the Capital One lounges themselves, of course, and then you've also got Priority Pass lounges, which is common to American Express and also Chase. You get Priority Pass, although currently the Chase Priority Pass is the best because it also gives you um, other experiences at the airport and then also um, uh, restaurant credit. Then third for Capital One is the Plaza Premium lounges. So these are kind of on a first come first serve thing. Uh, you can't reserve them. But for me at Terminal E, there's a Plaza Premium lounge and it wasn't very crowded there. So I arrived, no problems. And I was able to get a couple of um, turkey wrap halves and then they had a chocolate pudding and uh, some potato salad as well. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, a soft drink. They do also provide alcohol, you know, that can be monetarily, anyway, a big benefit to people who drink, but I don't happen to drink. So I value the lunch I had there at about $15. Then we got on the plane and, um, you know, backed away from the gate and everything was looking good, but unfortunately, due to a weather system, uh, it turned out that we had to head right back to the gate and um, our flight was delayed until the next morning. Now, here's where trip delay insurance could have come in handy, and this is something that's included um, in the Chase Sapphire Reserve. It's even better than the one in Capital One in terms of uh, the amount of time that needs to elapse before the insurance will cover stuff. 
uh, with the Venture X is at least a six hour delay. Uh, I'm sure Amex has something too, but I don't remember off the top of my head what they've got. I'll put that in the, I'll put that up here somewhere. But the Venture X uh, trip insurance could have covered up to $500 in expenses for the incident for anything that the airline wouldn't cover. Now, in my case though, I'd flown Delta and it was actually a pretty good experience. I was uh, impressed by this. As soon as I got, we got off the plane, instead of having to get in line and do all this stuff, I received an email on my smartphone and uh, this email sent me to a link. At that link, uh, I could choose a variety of hotels and these would be covered. I would just be given a little claim code or whatever to give to the hotel. On top of that, they gave me $45 as a voucher that could only be used at that hotel property. But it's essentially like a, a MasterCard had a credit card number and expiration date that they could run and the QR code as well. And they also provided transportation to and from the hotel uh, via Lyft. So had Delta not covered all that stuff, then I would have used the uh, the trip delay insurance from the Ventrax card, but likely I didn't have to, and it was a pretty smooth experience. The only thing about it is when I got to the hotel, um, they did have a bunch of snacks and stuff. They didn't really have a restaurant, and uh, I wanted to see if I could use the, uh, the voucher to buy those snacks, but the lady at the front desk didn't seem to... Um, uh, said that that wasn't possible. I'm sure she's confused, but I didn't want to fight it because I had my dinner packed already from the um, Capital One Lounge and that would have gone to waste if I didn't eat that. So not really a big deal. Uh, the next day I went back to the Capital One Lounge to get breakfast because, well, I looked at the breakfast at the hotel and the breakfast at Capital One would be much better. It certainly was. I was able to try some chilaquiles, which were a bit bland. I think with more flavor, they would have been better. I uh, had a croissant, uh, bacon and chives and cheese grits. Those were really, really good. Uh, then some yogurt and then also a breakfast sandwich. It was a pretty delicious breakfast. And again, I'd value this at about $20. Then I packed another lunch, which is similar to my dinner from the night before. And, you know, different items though this time to mix it up a bit. And I guess, again, I'd value that at about $20. This time we actually took off and I was able to enjoy it on the way. So as you can see here, um, you know, the, the value from the, uh, the global entry, um, I think that comes out to about 25 bucks a year, something like that. And then I got about $75 worth of value to me in terms of the, uh, the food that I was able to enjoy at the lounges. Uh, but on top of that, you know, there's sort of like the non-monetary stuff of just having a nice uh, environment to, to hang out in rather than sitting in the uncomfortable chairs at the boarding gate. And then the trip delay insurance could have come in handy as well and been worth quite a bit as well. My uh, trip to New York was awesome. We actually made it <laughs> this second try. And I got to, you know, visit the Guggenheim. I uh, saw a wonderful performance by the Dance Theatre of Harlem at uh, New York City Center, which is a gorgeous venue. We enjoyed some really cool exhibits at the Brooklyn Museum, and then a nice view at the Brooklyn Bridge Park after having some ice cream near there. And on another day, we visited a lot of the well-known sites in Manhattan, including Rockefeller Center, uh, the FAO Short Store, and St. Patrick's Cathedral, which was a real highlight for me. That is quite an incredible building. On the way home, sadly, I, I learned before I left that the uh, Priority Pass Affiliated Lounge at the LaGuardia Airport uh, had been closed, so there were no lounges uh, accessible to me. I didn't think to use my Chase Sapphire Reserve Priority Pass, which I could have used for some restaurants and stuff there, um, but I hadn't actually had any New York pizza up to that point, uh, so I just got a bunch of pizza before I got into the cab to go to the airport, and I was just fine. So hopefully this gives you a sense, though, that uh, these uh, travel perks can certainly be uh, quite valuable, and it's an easy way uh, to get back a lot of um, what you spend in the annual fees that these cards have, uh, especially because, you know, you're also earning um, generally some points, you know, on any spend that you put on that card or within the ecosystem where you can transfer points and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of the Capital One, it's pretty much a no-brainer because you actually get paid $5 to hold the card because uh, the annual fee is $3.95. Um, but you get a $300 travel credit and a $100 anniversary credit. Just got mine very recently as well. In the case of the Chase Sapphire Reserve and the American Express Platinum, uh, those are going to take a little bit more math because those um, those annual fees are a little higher. So you'll definitely want to do the math for yourself. Make sure it's worthwhile. Um, but, you know, in my case, these, these cards definitely work out and can be a nice way to um, make the travel experience a little bit more fun and also a lot less stressful because, you know, you have things like these insurance coverages and whatnot. So I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.